In this video, we're going to talk about Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. We've talked about bases a couple of times before in this class, and what we're going to talk about today is the idea of creating an orthogonal basis. So this is a minimal generating set, just like any kind of basis. It's the set of vectors whose span allows us to reach anywhere in the vector space, but each of the vectors is unit length and is orthogonal to all of the other vectors. So it's kind of like easy to deal with in some sense. So we like to use orthogonal bases because they're sort of convenient and they make different kinds of computations a little bit easier to do. The idea of Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization is to take an arbitrary basis and turn it into an orthogonal basis. It's a very simple and intuitive procedure and it's a kind of algorithm that we would refer to as greedy. When we talk about a greedy algorithm in computer science or machine learning, what that means is that it doesn't make interesting planning decisions. It just grabs one, in this case, one vector at a time and rolls through them greedily. It turns out that you can generate a nice orthogonal basis from a non-orthogonal basis by doing this kind of greedy procedure. I should say that although this is a very important algorithm and one that you definitely need to know about, it is not necessarily a really good numeric kind of algorithm in the stability floating point kind of sense that we've sometimes talked about. Often, you'll be better off using something like singular value decomposition, which we'll talk about in a couple of videos. Our starting point for Gram-Schmidt is to imagine that you have some not necessarily orthogonal basis. Let's imagine we have some basis with vectors, let's say b1, b2, out to some bn. The idea is to process this in some way that we wind up with a new basis that is orthogonal. So where we get a sequence of vectors, also n vectors, u1, u2, out to un. The idea here, this is an arbitrary basis, and this one is an orthogonal basis. Note that there's a little bit of confusion here. We're actually going to treat this as an orthonormal basis and not an orthogonal basis. I find this kind of confusing because orthogonal matrices are composed of orthonormal vectors. So I'd like to get out ahead of one small sort of point of confusion, which is the difference between orthogonal and orthonormal. Orthogonal just means perpendicular. Orthonormal means perpendicular and also unit length. However, sometimes we talk about orthogonal matrices and then we're often also implying that those vectors are orthonormal. And I, I find that to be a little bit confusing, so I'd like to distinguish between these. And so even though the book sort of talks about orthogonal, here I'm actually going to talk about orthonormal bases. That is, taking vectors that are not necessarily perpendicular and not necessarily unit length and turning them into a set of vectors that are all unit length and are all perpendicular to each other. So when we say that this algorithm is greedy, what that means is we're gonna basically be ticking along through the basis vectors and producing a set of orthonormal vectors. And we're not gonna do anything fancy accounting for future vectors or anything like that. We're just going to greedily tick along and make them one at a time. The very first thing we do is we treat the direction represented by B1 as the direction we're going to have for our first vector. So step one is to say that U1 is equal to b1 divided by the norm of b1. This has the effect that we just turned b1 into something of unit length. And so that's our starting point with u1. The way we proceed with every additional vector that we want to add to this is we project out all of the u's that we've made so far. So we kind of remove those from the current b and then we normalize it. Let's think through kind of how that would work for u2. So how would we generate U2? Well, we would start by taking B2. Now we need to subtract from B2 anything that is not perpendicular to U1. That is to say, because we want U2 to be orthogonal to U1, then we somehow need to remove all of the U1-ness from this vector. So we're gonna do that using orthogonal projection like we did in the last lecture. Let's imagine what we're gonna do is remove from B2 some amount of U1. Just for now, let's just imagine that that, let's call that amount C of U1. Now, where do we get C? Well, C needs to be the amount of B2 that appears in U1, right? So what's that going to be? Well, that is going to be the inner product of B2 and U1. 
So we'll write that like this. So this is the projection of B2 onto U1. And then we're going to divide by the length of this vector. All right, so then we'll divide by B2 minus what I've written here, which as C U1. Substituting in for C, then we're gonna wind up with B2 transpose U1, U1. Now this is a little bit confusing because this inner product produces a scalar, and then that scalar is used to change the length of U1. And then we divide by the norm of the overall vector. So we generate our second basis vector by taking B2, subtracting any part of it that looks like U1, subtracting any of that out, and then dividing it by its length. So it's perpendicular now to U1, and it is also unit length. So now we have two parts of our orthogonal basis. So now let's think about U3. So U3 is gonna be the same idea where we're gonna start with now B3, this third vector, but we're gonna subtract from it the projection of B3 onto U2 and the projection of B3 onto U1 to make sure that we're perpendicular to both of those vectors. So we don't want anything to appear in U3 that aligns in some way with U1 or U2. We'll do that using the same setup that we did here. We're gonna subtract first, let's say the part of B1. So we'll say B3 transpose U1. So that's projecting B3 onto this first basis vector. And we'll scale that again by U1. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with U2. So we're gonna take B3 and project it also onto U2, and then scale U2 with that result. And then as before, we normalize this by dividing by its norm so that it's unit length. In general, for the kth step of this procedure, then what you're gonna be doing is taking BK, and then you're going to subtract off all of the basis vectors whose index is less than k. So at every step, you add another one based on that b, and then subtract off the effect of all the previous ones. So let's write the general formula for the construction of uk given all of the u's less than k. We would say that uk is equal to bk, so the kth u starts with the kth b, and then we subtract from it the projection of bk onto all of the previous u's. So we could say i equals one, two, k minus one, all the previous ones, of bk transpose ui, projected onto the previous, so all of the k minus one previous u's, and then we scale it by that ui. And now this whole thing needs to be divided by its norm so that it has length one. So again, greedy procedure. We start by just normalizing the first b1, and then we're adding in new b's removing the effect of previous values, and then normalizing. And we do that until we've processed all n of the b's. And now we have a set of u's that are an orthonormal basis. So now let's do a simple example just to get a feel for it. Let's imagine that we have a b1 that is, say, 2, 0, and a b2 that is, let's say, 1, 1. Okay, so now we're gonna create a U1 and a U2 in this order. The very first thing we do is we normalize B1. We say that U1 is gonna be B1 divided by the norm of B1. And so that's pretty straightforward, right? That's going to be two zero divided by the norm, which in this case is just going to be two. We're going to get the vector 
one, zero. All we did was normalize this and it was, it was already a pretty simple vector. Then we're going to get u2 by taking b2 and subtracting off the projection of b2 onto u1 and then scaling u1 by that amount, then dividing by the norm. So let's think through what that means. We have this projection is kind of the key operation here. So this is the inner product of b2 with u1. Well, it's going to be one, right? Because it's where it multiply one times one is one, plus one times zero, zero, it gives us one. So this quantity here is just going to be one. And then we're gonna scale u1 by that amount. So when we scale u1 by that amount, then that's just giving us this vector back. b2 minus u1 is just going to be what? It's going to be 0, 1. So if we write that out, then we see that we get the vector b2, so 1, 1, minus 1, multiplied by u1, which is 1, 0. And so, of course, this just gives us another element of the standard basis, 0, 1. So it's a very, very simple example. But it's informative and interesting to imagine that we did this in the other order. So this was b1 then b2, but let's imagine that we had seen these the other way around. We wouldn't necessarily expect to get the same basis because it's a greedy algorithm. So let's just do that just to see what happens. Let's imagine that we're going to say that b1 is now 1, 1, and then b2 is now 2, 0. So all I've done is flip the order of the thing we just did. So step one is just to scale. So we're going to take b1 and compute its norm. Its norm is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, so the square root of 2. So the u1 is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 2 and 1 divided by the square root of 2. Or, of course, we could multiply this through by square root of 2 over square root of 2 and get the radical into the numerator instead of the denominator, and then we get root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. So now let's compute u2. Now our starting point is going to be to take b2, right? So it's to take 2, 0, and subtract from that the inner product of b2 and u1. So what's the inner product of b2 and u1? Well, let's see. It's going to be, let's just write this out. Let's say we're going to b2 transpose. So we'll write 2, 0, and then we're multiplying that by root 2 divided by 2 and root 2 divided by 2. And then we're going to multiply that whole thing by the vector u1. So what's this first, this little inner product? Well, 2 times root 2 over 2 is going to be root 2, and then 0 times that is going to be 0. So this whole thing, this inner product, is just root 2. So now, root 2 multiplied by this vector gives us a 2 over 2 and a 2 over 2. So we wind up in the situation where we have 2, 0, minus 2, 2. So of course, this is equal to 0, negative 2. Now when we normalize that, its length is 2, and so if we divide that out, then our u2 is 0, negative 1, so dividing that by its norm.
When we do these in a different order, we get a different basis. We get the basis of this U1 and this U2. And that's different from what we did here where we got the standard basis. 